the a new authority was uh, created in order to do this job and start handing out water rights. Basically, everybody that had been using groundwater had to apply for groundwater rights by submitting some sort of information that verified that they had actually been pumping water in the past 10 years. Things like crop records or um, electricity bills for running pumps, uh, those, those sorts of things. So we're quantifying water rights. We're metering for the very first time. These, these wells were previously not metered. And we're making them transferable. Okay? Very politically different. It was very interesting being at the te in Texas at the time and to actually witness the conversion of common property into private property. Following the initial rules for how to adjudicate, we ended up with over 550,000 acre feet of water being assigned, far in excess of the targeted 450. Lots of controversy, legislature again gets involved and changes the rules, saying okay, you can give out 572 acre feet of water rights. Even though it's known that when we have a drought, that's gonna be problematic for a spring flow. All right? So what we're doing now is basically saying that with those 572, if we have a drought condition, we are going to lower everybody's water right in some sort of proportion. There's actually a table that I'm not going to show you that indicates how that's going to be done. But given the stochastic nature of recharges, will turn out to be problematic. But that has to do with market design, not actually how the market is performing. The market's actually performing quite well. Results, sales and leases of water here are extremely common. Um, as of a couple of years ago, a lot of water had changed hands and rechanged hands. So a lot of this is resales or releases. So it's, there's a lot of double counting going on in that 200,000 acre feet. There has been a lot of speculative activity. A lot of people looking at water markets saying, oh my gosh, people are gonna speculate. Yeah, what's so bad about speculation? San Antonio has a, water, a lot of market power as a result of, um, of uh, their status here. Uh, I haven't mentioned going prices. Uh, going prices in the San Antonio area for Edwards Water on the order of $6,000 per acre foot as for a permanent right to take an acre foot of water every year, you know, forever, $6,000. And the uh, lower Rio Grande current price is on the order of $2,200 per acre foot. Right. Again, it's kind of like real estate. It's this location, location, location thing. You know, there's going to be different values for water rights in different places um, because scarcity is different in different places. Okay, a couple of things. When I think about the Okanagan and all this, a couple of questions come to mind. Um, for me, are you there that yet? Are you ready to talk about watermarking? Uh, my casual evidence suggests that maybe you aren't there. You know, I, my hotel this morning, I turned on the shower. There was no low flow you know, thing. It was, I like that kind of shower, you know, actually, that I got this morning. But, you know, it's just evidence that, that um, I have a, a niece who lives in Kelowna. I asked her for a water bill. She sent me her water bill. Wow, a flat rate? Per year, no volumetric pricing. I was really shocked by that. Um, a place that's talking about water, for, for a place that talks about water scarcity, you don't seem to be walking the walk. Um, so it seems like you've got uh, ways to go before water marketing actually is something that you're ready to embark upon. I do wonder, you know, if you really do have advancing scarcity for global warming reasons or increasing population pressures or whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what it is you are going to do if you're not going to do water marketing. Um, I'm wondering if some groundwork can be laid, you know, in preparation for these sorts of steps. With respect to surface water rights, I wonder, are you really metering the prior appropriations rights that you, that you have now, or are they just kind of fictitious? You know, I, I'm just asking, I don't know. Um, do, do, you know uh, do, do people really know the numbers and know the seniorities? <laughs> Normally you gotta get those things taken care of before you have a water market where these kind of numbers become very important. So I'm wondering if there's some firming up that needs to be done here. 
groundwater. I'm shocked by groundwater um, management around here. The idea that somebody can poke a hole in the ground, start pumping water, and therefore, you know, conservation of mass, take surface water from somebody else downstream. You know, holding surface water rights hostage to um, the groundwater law situation. You really can't have a water market where they're stealing aloud on the side, you know. Um, <laughs> Um, so you probably need to do something about that. Uh, and, and that's a Texas problem too, so I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Um, I spend a, a fair amount of time over in the Kettle, and I, and I, uh, Kettle River Basin, and I see the groundwater going on for pasture. And I thought, you know, and I see, you, can, you can almost see what happens to the water flow and, and, and the warmth of the Kettle um, and what that means environmentally um, as, as a consequence of as well, it's really, really surprising. So I think there's a lot of groundwork that can be done in order to move along and, 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 and prepare things. Yeah. Irrigation districts, this is an interesting issue worldwide. Um, irrigation districts, their existence, basically disconnect the ownership of water from the people who actually use the water, right? And that's, that's problematic in some places. In other places, not so problematic. Um, I know of a case in northern Colorado where a new water market came along. Uh, there's a lot of trade. Even though that's a small amount of the water in the area, the fact that that particular water market exists provides a value, which is very interesting data, and is able to transact a lot of water in spite of the base system there where water's not transferable. So maybe that's, maybe that's helpful in an irrigation district situation. You do have water rights here that are not owned by districts and so those would probably be the first to be marketed and maybe that's okay. Right. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <Real talking. laughs> Thank <laughs> you.